Hey guys, thanks for tuning in and checking out the video. We're just gonna film a quick spot uh, today uh, to kind of give you guys a quick second look of what I'm going to take home and drive tonight. And then tomorrow when I get back, I'm gonna, gonna give you guys a full review of how it drove, what, what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it. I've been waiting a long time to get our hands on one. It's a 2022 Ford Bronco Badlands Edition. Uh, with a Sasquatch package and we'll talk about uh, what that gives you and uh, did it make a difference or did it not? <laughs> okay guys, we're back and uh, I was able to take home this 2022 Ford Bronco Badlands for a little less than 24 hours. So. Uh, I first want to talk about some of the design features. There's 9 million videos already on YouTube uh, with full reviews that are going to be different than, than my personal review. Uh, but I want to talk about some of the positive things, some of the design features, and then some of the things that I really didn't like and uh, why I didn't like them. So just to give you guys a, a little bit of history, I'm normally in the car uh, for about 70 miles uh, one way to, to get to where we are. And then obviously about 70 miles home. So it's uh, 150 miles that I get to spend in one day uh, driving and uh, deciding like we're getting ready to talk about. This is a Badlands edition with uh, Sasquatch package, uh, which gives you, obviously you see the lift of the truck, the oversized uh, wheels with the bead lock. And there's a few other features of the Badlands that um, uh, makes it uh, look like it looks so one thing that I want to talk about is some of the things that the person that had it before I bought it and I think there was 2800 miles on it when we got it uh, I'm not a big fan of so right off the bat these aftermarket uh, step rail attachments I'm, I'm really not a fan uh, I don't care how tall how short you are but they're actually in a position to where you have to step over them to get in the car because if you step on them, then you're, you're this high and you got to change uh, feet to get in. So coming out of the truck, um, actually, they're not as much in the way coming out because you can just put one leg and step down, right? Uh, I'm just not a fan, as you guys will uh, figure out as we keep going, uh, with aftermarket stuff. I like the truck to be original, cars to be original. Uh, and if we're going to add something, I know that there is a great personality that you can add to your own Bronco, uh, similar to what Jeep has done as well. Uh, and for me, I'm just not a big fan of that step. If it was moved out of the way or flipped down, then I think you would be able to get in and out of it uh, a little bit easier. One other thing that I'll never be a fan, no matter how long we do this, is weather tech or all weather mats. Um, I know in this type of vehicle, having that to be able to clean up water, anything, mud you're going to get in, I'm all for it. But if you're going to get them, I like Ford's version or I like Chevy's version or Nissan's version. Uh, I just don't like uh, the aftermarket um, type uh, all weather mat. So I'm just a fan of seeing what's uh, the factory. I know people will say, because you sell factory new cars. That's not it. Uh, I just like the way the fit and finish and, and how they fit. And this is a perfect example of, of this fit. This overlap that you see right here, it's not clean to me. The, the mat should have had a shorter edge and just gone on the inside to where it's covering up that step already. And that right there is gonna bother me. May not bother you, but. <laughs> These pull uh, orange straps are an add on as well. Uh, they seem to be okay when you're sitting and pulling yourself in. But I did notice from driving that that actual uh, strap, that handle is right here in my peripheral vision. And there was no way to tuck it up on the driver's side. It just kind of bothered me moving around. So I didn't like that as well. Let's move on to some of the exterior things that I do like. Uh, one, one of the greatest uh, design features are the actual mirrors that are housed and constructed onto the front of the vehicle instead of onto the removable door. You can actually take the full doors off and do not have to worry about buying separate mirrors to mount so that you're still legal and can still see while you're driving. So uh, also another uh, innovative thing is this door, as you can see, this pillar stays, 
this glass goes down into the door and you can just lift off the door and put it into the back. So being able to take off all four doors, there's four bags that I've actually taken out of the back for uh, reasons that they don't get damaged right now. So I'm not taking doors off and pouring down rain in 30 degrees. But you can store all four doors in the back so you'll have them with you if you get somewhere and you wanna pop the doors back on. It's just a great design to not have that window frame and the door have to be this tall when you store it versus just this section. So great thing that Ford did from, from that standpoint. It doesn't, doesn't interrupt the overall appearance, right? Uh, if you get it from, uh, we'll walk around to the front to see the wide stance, uh, the great grill, the great round headlights, the tow hooks, everything that they did that makes it look like that utility vehicle that you can take anywhere, go anywhere you want to go. Ionized black chrome uh, rim that's standard on this package. Uh, oversized the tires, obviously, which completes the overall look. Uh, the soft top's pretty innovative to me. I didn't realize what you can do and what you can't do to it. Um, and let's talk really quickly about the noise. Uh, now I know, Ken, you're driving something with oversized tires, it's gonna be noisy. Yes, it is. Uh, any sport utility with oversized tires, any Jeep, any Bronco, any F-150, whatever it would be, you're going to have that road noise, right? Uh, but the drive of it is what's important to me. The noise is one thing, but is it comfortable, is it smooth? And 100% it is. Uh, there is a little bit of extra wind noise from the soft top, right? Not rattling around, just what you can hear outside. And the other interesting thing that I noticed was when you have the heat on, I was putting my hand up where the soft top was. And obviously the air temperature where that soft top was, was considerably cooler than it was down in uh, the cabin where the air is not blowing over the top, right? So uh, I didn't have to run the heat on a higher fan. Just something to be cognizant of that there's not a lot of insulation to keep you warm. So you will have to turn the air up if you're chilling. If you notice that it's a full tailgate swing, uh, normally with a hard top, you will have a, a glass that actually flips up so you can enter what you need to enter into the back. This top's pretty cool to me. There's two little release switches. The top folds up, kind of like you have that holds the hood. And there you go. You look inside, you can see the frame and how durable that frame is that holds the soft top actually up. There isn't a lot of play except in the windows. And this is actually on to that solid frame. So uh, as far as construction, yes, you can cut this, break into the truck. You can do that anywhere, right? You can break glass. But I felt like I did not hear a whole bunch of rattling, which is awesome. Even though the wind was blowing, there was no rattling, it was just the road noise from outside because obviously you're driving with a convertible top on. I do like the storage space. I do like that you can fold down the seats and then there's a little hidden storage actually inside. Uh, it's hard to imagine that those four doors will stack, uh, one, two, three, and four, and then there's a tie down to actually hold them secure while you're driving away as well. So that design is, is truly impressive. You got a 60-40 split in the back seat. You got a 12-volt outlet. You got a light back in the back, which I think is a great subtle design to be able to have a little bit of ambient light in the back. So when you're done loading whatever you're loading, pretty simple. Up, snap right back into place. Top clicks, and now it's locked. That's easy. Right? Yeah, pretty simple. Uh, tailgate's very solid. It is housing a full-size spare, as you can see on the back. Tail lights are absolutely a beautiful design. Right? Sure. It looks like a reverse B to me for Bronco, if you look at where the red is, right? Mm -hmm. And then you obviously have the Bucking Bronco logo on the right side of the table. Okay, awesome, right? Huge display screen. Uh, obviously everything that you need in Ford system is right at your touches. I also like that there's knobs. There's not a lot of cars uh, that are coming with a full screen like uh, you see here that you, you have knobs for. And Sometimes driving down the road, I know we think it's simple to navigate this screen, uh, but it's even simpler to just be able to hit the volume and turn it up for mm -hmm. me, right? Everything on the steering wheel uh, can control everything that you need uh, from the uh, information uh, that's on the screen. You can change the radio, you can, you can change screens, it's phenomenal. Um, if you notice this right, right here, you can see that this is what it does when you're driving and it's just right here in the way. There is nowhere to, to put it. 
So I would actually remove that. I would actually cut it and make it a little bit tighter so that it sits like this. Mm -hmm. And when you need it, you can grab it. But hanging right yeah, here that's just is just annoying, in the way. right? Very industrial with a whole bunch of auxiliary uh, switches that they have. So if you want to mount lights on the outside, uh, whatever else you want to have, there's definitely room to wire that in as oh, that's well. That's crazy. Right? Uh, top, we're not going to take the top off, but it is a pretty easy construction. You can flip it over once, you can flip it over twice, and have it just rest and sit there and have the advantage of not having anything on top of your head. To me, driving this in the summer, in the spring, I would just take the doors off, probably leave the top to cover my uh, balding head so that my head doesn't get sunburned anymore. Um, but either way, uh, it's, it's a whole bunch of choices to do. Uh, one of the reasons why I bought it with the soft top on it is a hard top to me is just a little bit more of an intense uh, process to take it off, to store it. I like the idea I can just flip it back if I get the urge to do that, right? Um, some cool things in the center console. Obviously, it looks like there's not a lot of room in the center console. The one design that I don't like, most center consoles have a latch that when you push it, it can open up like this or it can grab this tray because it's locked into it and it can flip that up as With well it. and then open up the bottom. This doesn't have that feature. It has this removable tray that just sits here. And so if you did want something underneath when you're driving down the road, you gotta open it. Mm -hmm. Then you gotta lift this off and hold it somewhere as you're driving and dig down to what you need. I do like the way that the seats sit. There aren't power seats even in this model. Uh, but there is a rolled lumbar for the driver's seat. Uh, this interior is not full leather. It's synthetic leather so that you can get in wet, you can get in dry. It actually uh, has less maintenance than what it would need if it was uh, full leather. So you can get the Ford Bronco from what I have uh, seen in full leather, but I think it's uh, probably a different package. It's not this big uh, Sasquatch package. Consistently driving it for 150 miles a day to and from work, I'm not sure that it fits into that realm. Uh, I do think as a commuter, as taking it on a trip, as going to the mountains, taking it to the beach, right? As an everyday driver where you may be driving 10 to 15 to 20 miles to work, I think it's an absolute steal and a bargain for what you get in it. Uh, I'm not sure that days on end of me driving seven to 800 miles a week, that there is enough comfort that I would enjoy hearing that noise. Uh, there was a time that uh, these were very difficult to get, still are, and they were bringing 30 and $40,000 over MSRP when they were first released, and that has started to settle back down. Uh, and I think it's a great value for, I think uh, MSRP on this truck was right in the, right, right below 60,000. And uh, I think it's a great value for that of everything that you can get. What it can do is phenomenal as well. Off-road, on-road, uh, the capabilities are fantastic. So uh, I wanna say happy holidays to everyone. By the time you're watching this video, uh, it should be uh, Friday before Christmas, I believe. And so thanks for all the support for our three quarters of the year. Uh, some of our videos are just touching 10,000 views and we couldn't do it without all of you hopefully rolling into 23. We're gonna take some more pre-owned stuff that we get and uh, just kind of give you my take from someone who's going to drive it and uh, give you the honest fee feedback of what I think, not just to uh, sell you something. So any questions, please drop them in the comment box down below and uh, please uh, like and share and continue to subscribe so we can continue to have the channel and maybe get Savannah some water so she doesn't cough <laughs> when we're filming anymore. So uh, happy holidays to everybody and um, look forward to 2023.